Hello, everyone, and welcome back to River City Girls 2. We're on the holodeck now. Huzzah. Wait, does that mean this is a holographic environment? Yep. Huh. This is called this is called the VR room. Ah, so we're playing VR, the town with no name. Oh, um, <laughs> get me a drink, bartender. Oh yeah. my God. You have to catch the sliding glass in real time, but it's still two frames per second. Uh, Oi. Oh, hey, there's that guy who like hides in the barn and has a bunch of close-ups for no reason because he's supposed to be the badass one. Yeah, he's got his his Clint Eastwood uh, beard there and out that like that literally is just the Clint Eastwood outfit. Yeah. <laughs> what what's with the random ass computer? It's how you know it's a holodeck. Huh. Okay then. Now we're inside uh, the computer. <laughs> oh man, it's just like the '90s where you became like an electric little bit, and then um, like floated around inside the computer, and you had to get through their literal firewall. <laughs> man, the '90s were dumb. Uh... Mini game time. Why are there chess pieces? Because it's a computer game. You know, considering, like, how far removed we are from that time when, you know, people in general considered computers to be a thing for nerds. It's, it's kind of funny that it's kind of it's kind of funny in a weird way that uh, Kyoko and Mistako are still in that headspace. So it's actually, this is a, a thing that's sort of interesting, is, is that um, a lot of younger people know less about how computer, in general, I should say, this is all generalization, but a lot of people that are younger than we are, I should say, uh, know less about how computers actually work and like operating the more technical aspects of a computer than people our age. Uh, and that's because a lot of, um, a lot of uh, schools stopped teaching computer stuff because, oh yeah, everybody knows how to work a computer. So, um, <laughs> also, also everyone just uses cell phones now instead of computers. Yeah, so it's not that unreasonable to think that they would actually be like that. It's not just the schools, it's also the way computers are designed these days. They are designed to hide their complex bits to idiot-proof themselves. So, like, all of the configuration menus are simplified, all of the loading screens are hidden behind big fancy logos. You have to manually set your computer to display its BIOS screen on boot up because computers are just designed to show their manufacturer logos now. Um, because they figure because they figure no one needs to know what's actually happening during boot up until they until they need to troubleshoot their computer, then it's really useful <laughs> to know what's happening during boot up. But you know, they'd rather you just buy a new computer. <laughs> eh. But we still have floppy disks as save icons. Yeah. But, like, at the same time, even, like, cell phone culture has enough incentive to learn technical aspects of how to use a computer because it's just Linux, <laughs> you know? So, you know, I would think people would be at least a little bit more on the up and up about it. Is there a quick travel in this game? I remember the original. There is game. there is a bus system between each major area, yeah. Okay. One of the missions later requires you to use it, because there's no way you're getting everywhere in time to do it. I really need help. Oh man, I can't read that text message if you just jump into the map. I really need help. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> if you pause the game when playing online, does it pause for both players? No. Oh, that's um, good. Enemy, enemies will beat the crap out of you while you're looking at your phone. 
<laughs> Protect me, Kyoko. I need to check my Twitter messages. Right this instant. I mean, instant. honestly, that, that, <laughs> that's like half the game where we're doing side quests. Look, I know we need to beat up these corrupt police officers, fembots, uh, pompadour wearing street delinquents, and Yakuza thugs, but... But, like, someone is wrong about politics on the internet, and that just cannot stand. Absolutely. Ugh. What country do we even live in? <laughs> is this uh, Japan or America? <laughs> eat your hamburgers, Apollo. This, that's one thing that I did really like about the first game, and it seems like it's continued into this game, because uh, since River City has such a like a weird um history with like languages and names and stuff like that it's like still very much a um american kind of setting in many ways but it also feels more um like everybody's name's japanese so i wouldn't be surprised if it actually is like a japanifornia Kind yeah, of. it probably <laughs> takes place in the same universe as Phoenix Wright does. <laughs> the, like, back when the old River City games were made, we were still in that era where everyone thought the Japanese needed to be phased out of everything because people would find it weird, which is why we get Jimmy Kudo's adventures as Detective Conan Etagawa solving murder mysteries at the Mount, Mount Rushmore Festival of Lights, where people dress up in kimonos for some reason, but... Um, it's still Mount Rushmore, I guess. But like, also we kept it, but we kept it as a uh, Yugi Moto and Seto Kaiba for some reason. <laughs> yeah, that was always the weirdest thing. Um, but like, you know, nowadays anime is so ubiquitous in pop culture that like no one gives a shit, and we just find that old awkward era of Americanization, you know, endearingly awful. <laughs> I mean, if anybody calls uh calls him satoshi instead of ash i'm still gonna call you a weeb but yeah i agree uh, well i well i mean the pokemon universe is one of those worlds where like it literally does not matter you know yeah i yeah i know for sure um, it's like it, it's like it culturally works either way but i don't know maybe this is just me but some like People will be like, oh, yes, do you like My Hero Academia? Ah, yes, I am a fan of Boku no uh, Hero Academia. And I'm like, bruh. Bruh. The the Japanese logo literally says My Hero Academia on it in English. Yeah. Don't be that uh, guy. <laughs> Being that guy is a bit weird, yeah. The, um, like, like, okay, I... I can understand maybe being in the habit of calling something like Future Diary by its Japanese title, if only because the American version, the, the not American, the, the English version of that anime and manga are in such a troubled state that you might not even know they exist. But, like, at the same time, you know, when you, you default to the incredibly complicated Japanese pronunciation of a title that has a perfectly serviceable and well-known English title. It's just kind of like, why? What, why, what, why, why do you do this to yourself? Why, why go through the extra effort to say the same thing in more syllables? It's just not like, why? Well, it's kind of like the whole sub versus dub thing. You know, it's, they both have their perks depending on what you're looking for. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are the, 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 the complete, the completely unreasonable people who insist that no, no English dub has ever been good, even though, we're decades into the era of um, of high quality English dubs for just about everything. Yeah, that's that hasn't even been true since the '90s. I can think of two examples right off the the my the top of my head. Me not even being an anime fan of dubs where people universally agree the English is better, and that's uh, Samurai Pizza Cats and Cowboy Bebop. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're good. That's good shit. But like, yeah. But, like, you still get people online who insist that English dubs are never good. And I'm just like, dude. So, you know, this is an interesting <laughs> psychological thing in that some things to, especially to nerds, because we're pedantic assholes, oh, yeah. is, like, if something is just true, like, oh, you know, uh, like, the like the example is, like, oh, dubs are bad because dubs were bad for X amount of years 
So that means that they they all must be bad. There is no good dubs ever. Um, and they just this becomes an ingrained belief, and they won't ever question it. Um, you know, and this is this is true for all sorts of so, all sorts of things like um, oh, Nintendo games are for kids, or um, <laughs> new Star Wars movies are bad, or um, you know, all sorts of different stuff like that. It's just once people have an idea in their head, it doesn't matter how outdated it is, they'll just like go with it no matter what. Yeah, there's kind of an inertia. Like once yeah. it takes way more energy to change an idea and a belief than to create it in the first place. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like it's the equivalent of saying that voice acting in video games is always bad. It hasn't been bad. Well, that was that. Yeah, that's the thing, though. It, it's uh, that was an idea people had. That was a, a thought people had for years and years and years. Uh, yeah, but but you see, the the two things were true for roughly the same amount of time because there's they're basically the same goddamn industry. You know, um, they were pulling from the same pool of talents. The same directors were responsible for both. So when they started doing well at one, they started doing well at the other. It's the same technique, but. Like, for some reason, you don't get those people who insist that voice acting in video games is always bad. Because, like, they don't... Because video games don't have that same element of being originally done in another language and then being dubbed. I mean, sometimes they are, but not always. And it's that that makes people want to stick to the dubs are bad, um thing because they, they they see it as they see it as not the pure experience i mean most of the time they're recorded and translated at the same time during development so it's not even a dub situation anymore yeah i mean like you look at a you look like look look at any given square enix game these days final fantasy 7 remake final fantasy 13 even had this going for it and it, like they even go to the trouble of animating the english voice acting which you never get in anime <laughs> You know what? That is that is something I'm really glad about. That at least for big mainstream RPGs, we're getting them released at the same time as the as Japan. Because yeah. I gotta tell you, having to wait, you know, six months and having everything leaked online. Uh, uh, six blue, months. <laughs> uh, I, I'm that's like like the like that was the, speedy back in the day. <laughs> I know. Like I'm thinking about something like Pokemon, where they'd get it out in like six months. Um, you know, there's a there's still a lot of uh, series where you would be lucky if you got something at all. You know, the tr the trails games take ages to localize, and unfortunately, Falcom is not a big company, so they can't really afford to do it all at once. They can't even localize games that they've already localized. Um, what? What's this? Um, Freaking ease the ease three remake oh. that they've already remade and already. Translated. Oh yeah, there, there's a That's... whole there's a whole mess of noise with the with the um with the Western publisher rights because they've switched publishers. So like, what was it? Xseed used to do the stuff, but Xseed was a small company. I think it's Xseed. I I think so. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. Now they've now now they've transitioned to working with some company that is objectively worse, but a whole lot bigger and has a whole lot more money, so they can do their stuff faster. Um, which is why we got East Eight and the the Archaeozoic Big Hole. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's probably for the best that the Crossbell games just. Just use the GeoFront translation. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to know what would become of the Trails series if the uh, current localization company actually just did a new translation for those games. Uh, but never mind. I'm going way off topic. Who's this? Who's this lady? This is Suiko, Suiko the social the social media influencer. She oh, phones to make us look like idiots. Oh. Also, the boss just killed our internet connection. Your password yeah. is... Your we'll, password... We'll, we'll, we'll see it soon. It's not all a sucking, I promise. That's a coincidence. <laughs> I don't know if Kyoko was, like, deliberately, like, being catty there, or if she was just being oblivious. Uh, She's for her, I ideas. go with the, the latter. Uh, it generally. could swing either way. <laughs> Uh, 
I understand half those words, Suiko. Damn, Zoomer. Glitterati? What? Okay. Why did she feel the need to speak all of that stuff out loud while doing it? I'm pretty sure it was like a voice to text text message. Or not a true right. honker in this universe. A honk. You know, I have seen people use voice to text on their phones. It's not actually all that good. Um, oh, no, like, it's usually terrible. Um, like, it's okay. Like, it, it, it's, it, it does the job if you're too lazy to do it right, but... <laughs> so yeah, this boss has a lot going on in it, and it killed our internet a lot, pretty well. Yeah. What does this game do when you uh, run into internet issues? Like it tries to run as best it can. The problem is that it's still lagging, so objects that hurt you are behind. Yeah, basically like... the hitboxes and the actual pixels on screen it get desynced. Oh, so the areas okay. that damage you are just slightly off from where the things appear to be. I think I'm kind of seeing that a bit with Kyoko, who keeps getting hit when the things are nowhere near her. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah. Yep. What? what oh, happened? yeah. She also, inter she also keeps on switching the screen constantly and throwing us into these mini games that you have to, like, figure out on the fly how to not die. I like how it's a completely different sprite style. Yeah, it's a Super Nintendo game. Visually, it's amazing, but uh, <laughs> actually playing it is... I think this is, is based uh... on... Because Kyoko and Misako are actually old River City characters. I know this. Well, this is... This is from... Uh, this is from River City Girls Zero. This is literally yeah. the game these two characters came from. That's neat. Yeah. Uh, like, I remember playing yeah, through here, that exact here's, level. Here's where it lags super hard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see it lagging. Oof. Yeah, no, this fight would have been an absolute blast if it weren't for the leg, because all the visuals and references are incredibly cool. Yeah, and I'm sure that I'm sure it runs way better if you're playing it on uh, local. On it local. did. I played I played single player um, about a month afterward, and this fight was way easier. It is a really fun looking boss fight, apart from the lag. So, um, why does the social media lady have a hard light barrier? It's high tech. Because she doesn't fight herself. Yeah, it's also <laughs> high tech, yeah. It's okay. She probably doesn't understand how any of it works and has to go to a specialized shop every month to actually have it maintained. I imagine so if she's always getting the latest model of cell phone. Because when you do that, your cell phone melts. <laughs> 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 Never get the latest model of cell phone. Always, like, lag a model or two behind. <laughs> Because by then, they've quality assured things. Don't be Apple's beta tester, okay? It's not worth it. Early access cell phone. I mean, unless you're actually being paid to be their beta tester. But, like, don't be a consumer who is also their beta tester. Yeah, don't don't pay them <laughs> to be your their beta tester. Yeah. Especially when you're paying them an extra $500, you know. <laughs> Just... So I was, just out of curiosity, I looked up the price of Apple computers versus the price of, like, you know, a boring non-Apple computer. Um, I don't know how people do it. Like, well, I, I, I mean, okay, the actual Apple computers for computer stuff other than gaming is, you know, it's it, it, it can be worth the price. Like, if you're a professional graphic designer or video editor, having a Mac with the relevant software is a superior way to do that shit than uh, um, compared to, oh, hey, hey, River City Ransom. Um, it, it's a superior way to do that shit than just doing it on, an, on a Windows computer. That is not to say that doing it on a Windows computer is the wrong way to do it. You're just going to run into a few more headaches, which, you know, may be worth it depending on how you view that price point. But, like... For anything that is not professional computer job stuff, stick with Windows, okay? The operating system is a pain in the ass at times, but it's, it's, it, it does more, more of the stuff you'll want to do. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Um, do you die if it goes all the way to the, like, if it touches you, this uh, black stuff? It does, or if it... It, it does damage. Oh, it does oh. damage, okay. Ah, so it's like a screen lock, okay. The, um... 
but like what I don't understand is buying into the Apple price point uh price gouging scheme for anything other than professional computers. Because... Um it's it's the brand. Um so I think I've told this story on the channel before, but my brother got a like a uh, went, uh, like a Dell or something like that uh, laptop uh, before he went to school and he put an Apple sticker over the logo for the other computer on it so that people would think that he had it because <laughs> it's a status thing for some reason having uh, an iPhone or whatever makes you look cooler um, it is like like their products are genuinely like high quality stuff I will not like dispute that but when it comes to stuff like their phones, uh, like the device is good, but you're 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 giving up like customizability in exchange for a very small increase in general quality, which you know. There's a there's a sketch that I saw um, by Stephen He who um, where he uh, and somebody else who I don't know the name of. Um, uh, role play as executives for Samsung um, and then <laughs> they're like they kidnap a guy and they'd be like okay so you agree and then they're talking to a guy and it's like so you agree that we have a far better price point and it's like yeah and you also agree that we have just as high quality materials you know that makes sense so given this information would you rather buy an Android or an iPhone and then every time the guy's like, oh, I think probably the iPhone. And then they all get pissed off and it's very yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, that is some top tier emotional damage. But like emotional damage. <laughs> so the but like but what, what I really mean is that like when you compare an iPhone to an equally to to like an equal or close to it uh, Android device, what you're generally getting is a comparison between a a device that is that is that is like physically a better device but has but but lets you do less on it and you're paying more and you're paying like 100 or 200 dollars more for the privilege of doing less with a slightly better electronic device and I don't get it it's so fucking backwards Gotta get that FOMO in. Or you can just buy from Verizon and get the worst of both worlds because they they <laughs> they lock down their devices worse than Apple does. It's weird. Um, <laughs> eh.